Today we're going to begin looking at imperialism between uh, 1800 and 1914. Uh, during this point in time, European countries really began to compete with each other very seriously. And so we want to look at the first at the uh, reasons why the European countries uh, began to try to build empires during this time. Uh, imperialism is the quest for colonial empires, and it can include the use of economic, political, or military power. And as we will see, uh, different European countries used really all of these. I mean, not, not to say every country used all of these, but uh, collectively, uh, the different European countries uh, used a wide variety of these in different combinations in different places. <clears throat> the reasons why they did it uh, partially was to increase trade by providing a market for manufactured goods. Uh, you know, keep in mind that industrialization was still fairly new. So, you, you know, to expand and grow their economy, finding new trade partners was important. Um, they wanted to gain sources for raw materials. And they wanted to secure military advantages. Uh, that might include new military bases uh, or new alliances with other countries. They wanted to increase prestige. Uh, there, there was just a sense of, you know, just like people, sometimes there's a sense of prestige when people uh, have, uh, let's say, you know, a big nice house or, um, you know, a really fancy car. There's a sense of prestige behind that. Well, there was also prestige for countries, and this prestige came from having a large colonial empire. So it was a way in which they competed with each other or measured themselves against each other. And... So, um, you know, these were some of the major reasons. And then other reasons included religious reasons. Uh, there was a large effort to spread the Christian faith. And then also, some were applying social Darwinism, which social Darwinism was this idea put forth, uh, you know, in the mid-1800s, uh, Charles Darwin published his book, on the origin of species, where he um, explained the process of evolution through natural selection. And so, particularly, uh, British philosopher Herbert Spencer um, began to expand upon that and began to apply this concept of, of social Darwinism, arguing that um, the the you know the kind of the, that concept of the survival of the fittest that uh, those that were most fit would end up kind of being in charge it becomes a justification for the discrepancies between the haves and the have-nots and uh, once again it, it kind of somewhat a little bit racist associated with it as well it, there was a belief that uh, whites or the European whites were superior to the native peoples in these various areas that they were conquering. So, uh, you know, one, once again at this point in time, uh, important concepts were this, you know, concept of, of nationalism. There was a great sense of national pride that largely kind of fueled that, that sense of prestige. And once again, that, that idea of um, applying social Darwinism. Uh, an example of this would be... a poem written by Rudyard Kipling called The White Man's Burden, which was really a racist patronizing that preached that the superior Westerners had an obligation to bring their culture to uncivilized peoples. Um, so, you know, in other parts of the world. So the idea was that uh, European culture was superior to these other cultures. And so it becomes a justification, almost as if, hey, we're doing them a favor by bringing them our superior culture. Uh, Germany and Russia especially used imperialistic drives to divert popular attention away from the class struggle at home. Uh, you know, in Russia, as we saw, Russia was beginning to have a lot of problems on the home front. Uh, in the 1800s, there were you know a tre tremendous amount of struggle 
especially once they began to industrialize. And it took people's attention away from, uh, from this, this struggle if they were more focused on things like, um, you know, trying, trying to fight a battle, a war, uh, over conquering another area. So it was a great way to divert attention and, and cause a distraction. There were many different forms of imperial rule as well. There was direct rule, which meant sending officials and soldiers to administer their colonies. This was typically practiced by the French. Um, 